Coming up on Network Africa, the World Health Organization pushes for extra security in the Ebola hit Democratic Republic of Congo. Two South African white farmers found guilty of killing a 16-year-old black boy in 2017. An Ethiopian Prime Minister, Abiy Ahmed, alleges that some soldiers who entered the grounds of his office last week had planned to kill him. the program. I'm Millicent Walker. The World Health Organization says it wants the United Nations Security Council to approve additional resources for the international peacekeeping mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Health workers continue to tackle the outbreak of the Ebola virus as insecurity and mistrust from the local community hampers efforts to stop the spread of the virus. A total of 139 people have died in the current outbreak, which began in August. Emergency committee had a consensus that this outbreak certainly is not uh, an outbreak of global importance, but they are very concerned for the region. We also considered that if a FIC is declared, that may have implications on travel and trade, and that actually might hinder the efforts to, of the response teams, and that might rather be ne have a negative implication uh, to the whole action to control the outbreak. And therefore, uh, the uh, emergency committee concluded that this is not a public health emergency of international concern. As you may have heard in one of the provinces, the outbreak is pretty much mitigated. In another uh, province, it's just flaring up, but the concentration of the response teams is now focusing on this new area. And so we do have some optimism that this outbreak, just like the one in May, will be brought under control within reasonable time. Well, in the meantime, the Democratic Republic of Congo, they've summoned the Angolan ambassador over the expulsion of thousands of Congolese migrants from Angola during a crackdown on artisanal diamond mining this month. In a statement, Congo's foreign minister, Leonard Okitundu, says Angola should conduct a comprehensive investigation to establish who is responsible for what she describes as wrongful act. The number of Congolese fleeing Angola is estimated to be 28,000 by the DR Congo government, who says that they had been forced to leave by Angola. Some of them accused the Angolan police of carrying out human rights abuses. Earlier, President João Lourenço said illegal immigration linked to illicit diamond mining had reached alarming levels. And in South Africa, a court has found two South African white farmers guilty of killing a 16-year-old black boy, Malet Homola Moshiu, in 2017. Judge Ronald Hendricks said he believed Peter Dorward and Philip Schutt threw the boy from the back of a moving truck after they caught him allegedly stealing sunflowers. The farmer said the boy had jumped from the truck. A spokesman from the Opposition Economic Freedom Fighter, EFF, welcomed the judgment, saying it reinforces confidence in South Africa's justice system. The two men are expected to be sentenced today. And back in Nigeria, the United States, and uh, this is the United States Aid for International Development, USA, they have empowered over 45,000 children across eight local government areas in Edo State through its small empowerment program in the last five years. The project coordinator, Emeka Noje, who set this at the Edo State Small Project, dissemination meeting held at the government house in Benin City, added that the success recorded is as a result of the enabling environments created by the state government. 
A day for smiles inside the banquet hall of the government house in Benin City, the Edo State Capital. Some beneficiaries of the Sustainable Mechanism for Improving Livelihood and Household Empowerment Smile Project meet for the last time. After a five-year spell in the state, the empowerment program comes to an end. The project, powered by the United States Aid for International Development, USAID, is designed to offer welfare services to the less privileged. Interventions of the project included the provision of improved access to HIV care and support services, and also a range of household economic strengthening activities, which comprise all conditional cash transfers which targeted over 5,000 households in the states, with each household getting a lump sum of 20,000 naira. There are testimonies from the audience. My friends around me and my family, and they asked me what type of business I want to go to, so I told them fashion designer. Then I enrolled me in the first fashion school, so I was the first fashion designer. For one year, after one year, I was at the age of 20 years, she now on my own. For the Edo State Government, projects of this nature strengthen efforts to build a better society. We said from day one that the government will not be a magician, that all we are going to do for our people is to create the enabling environment for business to strive. And that's exactly what we are doing with Smile Project Committee, providing all the necessary facilities for them to move around without anybody being lost. Having successfully run its course of program, the SMILE project has assisted over 45,000 orphans and vulnerable children across eight local government areas of Edo State through support services in the areas of education and health care, among others.